ever find yourself kind of stuck on a problem, you know, and then you sleep on it and suddenly you wake up with the answer. Oh, absolutely. That aha moment. Like, where did that come from? Right. What if I told you that our dreams might actually hold even more of those aha moments? Mm. That's what we're diving into today. Dream journaling. Okay. We're taking a deep dive into Clara Penrose's 50 dream journal prompts. All right. We're going to see how these prompts can help us tap into that hidden potential. Yeah, it's amazing how much our dreams can actually tell us about what's going on, you know, under the surface. Right. Even if a dream seems completely out there, totally bizarre. Oh, yeah. Those seemingly random things, those details, they can give us a glimpse into, like, our deepest feels or desires. Mm. Things that we might not even realize are you know, motivating us when we're awake. It's like our brain is sending us coded messages. Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dream journaling is how we learn to crack that code. I like that. Penrose's prompts are a really great place to start. Okay. For example, she talks about recurring themes. Mm. You know those dreams that just keep popping up? Yes. Night after night? Yeah, yeah. One prompt that really stood out to me asks about those recurring dreams where you achieve something really significant. Okay. Have you ever had those kinds of dreams? Oh, yeah, definitely. Where you, like, win an award or something? It's so interesting, yeah. You know, it's a very common one. Yeah. And it can be um, it can be easy to just interpret it at face value. Right, right. But it's often more, it's more nuanced than that. Like, let's say you dream about landing your dream job. Mm -hmm. It might not mean that, you know, you're going to get that promotion tomorrow. Right. But it could point to... Like a really deep desire for recognition, for example, mm -hmm. or even maybe a fear of, you know, not moving forward in your career. Oh, like being stagnant? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like a fear of stagnation. That's so interesting. So it's like your subconscious is saying, hey, pay attention to this. Like this area of your life, there's something here you need to explore. Yes, exactly. Instead of just being like, oh, weird dream and just brushing it off. Right, right. We can use these prompts as a springboard to like really do some self-reflection. Absolutely. And you know, another one that I find particularly intriguing is the recurring location one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like that spooky old house. Yes. That you've never actually been to. Or like a meadow or something that you've never been to. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's um, often those locations that carry that symbolic weight. Like what could it mean? Yeah, that, that might represent, you know, a past experience. Oh, okay. Or a relationship. Right. Or even just a feeling that you associate with that specific place. Oh, wow. I was thinking about, like, what are the emotions that you experience when you're in that dream, in that location, mm -hmm. that can really tell you a lot about what your subconscious is trying to communicate? So it's like our brain is handing us this map. Yes. But instead of it leading to buried treasure, it's leading us to, like, a better understanding of ourselves. Exactly. I know I've had those dreams where a particular place just gives me the creeps, totally. even <laughs> if I can't really explain why. And that's the thing, right? Like, the key is not to get too hung up on, you know, what does this mean? Yeah. There's not a dream dictionary right. that's going to tell you, this is exactly what a meadow means. Yes. It's about paying attention to your own associations with things. Right. What resonates with you? What feels important? Tuning into our own, like, internal guidance system. Yes. Exactly. Speaking of feelings, the next section, emotional experiences. Oh, yeah? This feels really relevant to anyone who's ever woken up from a dream like, oh, my gosh, I'm feeling everything. Yeah, those amplified emotions can be really, really revealing. It's like our dreams are giving us this crash course in emotional intelligence. Right. Like, one prompt in this section that I thought was really powerful is about those dreams filled with, like, intense joy. What do you think it means when we experience that kind of pure, unadulterated happiness in our dreams, even if, like, the situation is totally bizarre? Oh, yeah. I mean, it really suggests this deep longing for that same sense of joy in our waking lives. Yeah. Think about it. What are the things that, you know, are bringing you joy in your dream? Okay. Are those needs being met in your everyday life. That's a good point. Your dreams might be a little nudge to like seek out more of those experiences. I love that. Yeah. It's like our subconscious is saying, hey, remember what this feels like. Yes. Let's find more ways to feel this way when you're awake. Exactly. And on the flip side, if you're having dreams that are filled with anxiety or fear, that could be a sign that there's some unaddressed stress in your life. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe it's time to like take a step back and reevaluate your priorities. Find some healthy coping mechanisms. Pay attention to those recurring emotional patterns. Mm -hmm. There's really, really useful information for your well-being. It's like free therapy. Right. 
Speaking of paying attention, this next section, vivid imagery, is where things get really interesting. Okay. Henrose talks about encountering these unusual creatures in our dreams. Yes. You know, those images that just feel so surreal. They're so weird and otherworldly. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about dreams yeah. is, you know, how they tap into that creativity and that imagination. It's like I had this dream once where I was having a conversation with a giant talking pineapple. What? It was hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Our dreams can be such weird places. So strange and wonderful. Yeah. And those unusual images, those creatures, they often carry symbolic weight. But just like with those recurring locations... It's not about finding that literal translation. Right. It's about what's your experience. What does that talking pineapple represent to you? So our dreams are speaking to us in this, like, secret language. Yes. The more we pay attention, the more fluent we become. Exactly. And sometimes those vivid images can help us, like, solve problems. Really? This next section, problem solving. Okay. This is getting meta. Yeah. Penrose talks about how we can actually use our dreams as this space to work through those challenges that we're facing. Like in our real lives. In your waking life, exactly. Wow. It might sound a little strange, but it offers this incredible playground for our minds to like explore. Okay. To think outside the box without the constraints of logic. Right. Or you know how we usually think. Yeah. Have you ever woken up from a dream with the solution to a problem that's been like bugging you? Oh yeah, all the time. I've totally had those. Right. Where I wake up and I'm like, oh, that's what I should do. Yeah, yeah. But beyond just stumbling upon those solutions, Penrose says that we can actually use something called dream incubation. Okay, who? Yeah. To actively engage with the problem before we even fall asleep. Oh, interesting. By focusing on a particular question or a challenge before you drift off, you're basically planting a seed in your subconscious. Okay. While you sleep, your mind can be working on it, oh. often from like a totally fresh perspective. It's like giving your brain a little homework assignment. Yeah, that's brilliant. You know, <laughs> as much as I love the idea of like solving complex equations in my sleep, I'm even more intrigued by using dream journaling for personal growth. Oh, boy. Which brings us to our final section. Yeah. Personal growth. Nice. This section really speaks to that desire that we all have, right? To be the best versions of ourselves. Absolutely. And one prompt in particular stopped me in my tracks. Reflect on a dream where you encountered your future self. Whoa. Imagine, just imagine the possibilities. This sounds, yeah. To have a conversation with a version of yourself that's already like walked the path. Right. Who's learned from your mistakes. Yeah. Who's celebrated your triumphs. What would you ask? Oh my gosh, so many questions. It'd be like having a cheat sheet for life. Right. I think even beyond like getting specific answers, just the act of envisioning your future self, someone who's confident, fulfilled, living in alignment with their values, that in itself can be really motivating. Absolutely, yeah. It's like tapping into that inner wisdom. Right. That part of you that already knows what you're capable of, even if you haven't quite figured it out yet. Yes. Your dreams can help you connect with that part of yourself. So it's like our dreams are giving us a glimpse of our own potential. Mm. Dream journaling gives us the tools to then translate those glimpses into real world action. I love that. As we're wrapping up our deep dive into these dream journal prompts, what's like the most important thing that you hope listeners take away from this? You know, I think the biggest takeaway is that you don't have to be a therapist. Right. You don't have to be a dream expert mm -hmm. to benefit from dream journaling. Okay. It's really a practice for anybody yeah. who's willing to just approach their dreams with curiosity. And an open mind. An open mind. Mm -hmm. You might be surprised by what you find. It's about reclaiming those hours that we spend in dreamland. Yeah. Recognizing them as the source of valuable insight, mm -hmm. inspiration. Totally. It all starts with that simple act of just paying attention, writing things down. Yeah. Jotting down those dreams before they fade away. Yes. Even if it's just a couple keywords or like a quick voice memo on your phone, that act of just acknowledging your dream can make a huge difference. Absolutely. And the consistency is key. Okay. The more you do it, the more you're going to see those patterns. Right. The more you're going to hear those messages. So to our listeners, we encourage you, start that dream journal. Yes. Keep it by your bed. Before you reach for your phone in the morning, Right. take a few moments to reconnect with those dreams. See what's there. Who knows what you might uncover. Exactly. Sweet dreams, everyone.